for our second demonstration here, we have your standard sump pump that people should be ha should have installed in their basement. Um, can you describe a little bit of how this works and potentially how homeowners should be maintaining this? Sure, so sump pumps don't appear in every home. Uh, it's, they're very common after about 1950 or 60, mm -hmm. but in homes before that you won't find them unless they're, it's in a retrofit situation where okay. there's been a lot of serious water right. put in. But if you do have one of these, you're going to see basically a cover on the floor that's a round cover. Mm -hmm. um, it should be sealed because uh, you don't actually want water from the surface flowing in there. Of course. So you want to unseal this, this cover. Um, inside is a, essentially a bucket under the ground. So it's a bucket below your floor. Um, what happens is around your house there is a big pipe under the ground that has holes in it and the water from around your foundation pours into the pipe and is gravity fed into this bucket in your basement. And now that would be so a weeping tile, correct? That's that's right. It's okay. called a weeping tile or a drainage tile. So or foundation drain, mm -hmm. all kinds of names of basically course. means whole uh, pipes with holes that collect water. Yes. So they dump them in the basement. Um, if there's heavy snow melts or heavy rain, you right. can end up with hundreds or even thousands of liters of water making its way to this bucket or okay. sump pit in right. your basement. So what you need to do is make friends with your sump pump. Okay. You need to make sure it's working and it's going to be reliable. Right. So in order to make sure that it's working, you have to make sure it hasn't seized up mm -hmm. or hasn't clogged or anything. So just get in the habit of once every season, just um, opening up your lid, taking a bucket of water, and checking to make sure that the float, once the level of water gets high enough, the float clicks on, you can hear it, clicks on, right. and that the sump pump starts pumping water out. Yes. Right? If it's seized, you have to do some problem solving to, to prime the pump. Um, if it's stopped working altogether, you're gonna have to go to the hardware store, get another of one, course. et cetera. Um, we know that, again, about 40% of people are not checking their sump pumps. Mm -hmm. So when they go uh, out of the house for the right. day, they go on vacation, and when there's a big um, storm or melt, they can't be guaranteed it's actually right. going to work. One thing that has also been shocking, one of our highest stats is we know that about 80% of people do not have backup batteries for their sump pumps. Obviously, they're, they're powered by electricity. Um, we had a very significant storm in Toronto yesterday. Yes. Um, we know that if people have power that's running their sump pump, that's great. But if they want to get into the basement to check on things, sometimes you need to turn off the power to avoid risk of electri electrocution. Of course. So you want to have a backup battery that can kick on that's nice and high up. It's going to be above the level of the flood. Yes. So that it can keep pulling that, those hundreds and hundreds of liters of water out of the basement for you. And of course, because it's a battery, you have to remember to check that too. So when you're checking your sump pump, check your backup battery. And that is the, the second most significant risk in your home. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the most significant risk in your home and that's risk of sewer backup. Because that's uh, sewer water, mm -hmm. it's uh, a health risk and it's right. also the most, um, the highest volume of water that you can have in your basement right. from the city lines um, and the most expensive to clean up. So that is our next tip coming up.